Hello and welcome to this third video in my series about building a lit element application. My name is Marcus Helberg. In the two previous videos we've built a to-do application using lit element. In this third video what we're going to do is we're going to introduce Redux for state management. If you're not familiar with Redux, it's a very popular state management library, especially in React circles, but it's by no means uh, limited to being used only in Re uh, React applications, so it's something that we're going to use here. Uh, so if you're not familiar with how Redux works, we'll do just a very brief overview of what we're trying to do and how Redux works. So currently our application is essentially only this to-do view. We are maintaining all the state of the view inside of this one component. When we move to uh, using Redux for managing our state, essentially what's going to happen is that we have one central state. This state will be shared among all the views that we have and will have in the future. So the state will be managed by something called a store that we can subscribe to. So the to-do view is subscribed to the state. So anytime that gets updated, uh, we'll get uh, notified and that way we can update the view accordingly. When the view wants to change the state, what it'll do is it will trigger an action or it will dispatch an action. For that, we'll use something called action creators uh, to create those actual actions, which will then get dispatched. The store will receive that action and use something called a reducer to determine how the state object should be changed based on the action. So the store manages the state, allows us to subscribe to it, and we can dispatch actions to it in order to update the state. Before we can get started with the coding, we need to install a few dependencies. So I'm going to install Redux, which is the state management library itself. Then Reselect, which is a helper for doing more efficient memo selects. We'll include PWA helpers which is a library of helpers that allow us to easily connect lit element components to a Redux store. And finally, nano ID, which is a library for generating IDs. Okay, with those installed, let's go into our code in the source folder, create a new folder called Redux. This folder will be where I'll create all the Redux related, all the state management related code. We'll start by creating the uh, reducer. So the reducer is the uh, piece of Redux essentially that's uh, in charge of updating the state. So we'll create a file for it, call it reducer.js. And we'll move some of the things over from our to-do view into this. So again, the kind of main task that we have in this video is moving the state management, both the updating and listening uh, into Redux. So we'll move the visibility filters out of to-do view, put them in our reducer. I will export these uh, out of the reducer just so I can import them here. Import the visibility filters from redux slash reducer.js. So that way the code doesn't break. The second thing I want to define in my reducer is the initial state that our application should have when it starts up. The initial state will just be an object where we have the properties that our state consists of. So in our case, that will be the to-dos and the currently active filter. The to-dos will just be a empty array and the filter will be the show all filter out of this visibility filters object that we have. So visibility filters dot show all. All right, so that's a little bit of background work and the next part will be creating the actual reducer function. The reducer function is a function that takes in the current state as it is and an action object that describes what should be done and then it performs uh, that action and produces the next state object, so the modified state object, or I shouldn't say modified. In Redux, we're always working with immutable data structures, so anytime we update the state, we essentially make a new version of the state that includes this change. So let's create the reducer. So the reducer, like I said, is a 
function that takes in a state and an action. And typically what you'll see in here is that you have a switch statement that switches over the action type. The action object in our case will have a type property that we can deter use to determine what should be done. For now, we don't have any action, so what we'll do is just uh, put in a default clause and return the state as it is. So we don't do anything essentially here. Only other thing we want to do here is default the state to this initial uh, initial state object that we had. So the first time somebody calls the reducer, and if there isn't a previous state, we can always uh, initialize the state to this given state. OK. If you remember the diagram earlier, uh, this reducer and the state are managed by something called a store. So let's create a store that we can use then to subscribe to from our to-do view. Create a new file here. Let's call it store.js. We create the store by calling a create store function from Redux. It looks something like this. So we call create store. We pass in the reducer for our application. And after that, we can pass in any, any kind of additional middleware we're not going to touch uh, middleware too much, uh, but I in did include the Redux DevTools middleware here. That's something that we can use uh, in our application to see how the application is actually modifying the state. In order for this to work, we need to import the create store function from Redux. So we'll include this from Redux and then the reducer here is the one that we just created. We'll import that as well. Like so. OK, so now we have a, a store that has a reducer that knows how to modify our state. And it has an initial state that we can already uh, listen for. The next step we want to do is go into our to-do view and connect this up to our store so that it will get notified whenever something in the store changes, essentially when the state changes. For that, we will need to use one of the helpers from that PWA helpers library. We'll import that. So we'll import the connect method, or the connect function, I should say, from PWA helpers. That'll allow us to connect this element to the Redux store. We put it in here. So we, instead of extending from lit element directly, we call connect. Then we pass in our store. And then to the result of that, we pass in lit element. We need to import the store as well. OK. So we have this connected to our store now. Calling connect will give us one one more callback function here, and uh, that's going to be the state changed method. So this will get the updated state whenever the state changes. We can use this to set the properties on our component. So if any time the to do sorry the filter changes, we're able to set them to our uh, uh, local local properties here, which again will use uh, cause lit element to render the the template or update the template accordingly. So here we'll pull out the to-dos equal to the state.todos property and this.filter equals state.filter. This means that we don't need to have this constructor anymore that you, uh, we used for initializing the things. The only thing that you Notice that I'm not doing right now is I had that uh, task property before that I don't have anymore because that's something that's not really part of the uh, global application state, something that I really need to keep track of there. That's something that's very specific to this component. So I, I omitted that from there. What I'll do here instead is that when we're binding the value of this uh, task, I'll just have it default to an empty string unless it's set. OK, so now we've connected this uh, view to our store. So it will get updated anytime 
the store gets updated or anytime the state gets updated. What we need to do then is move a lot of this logic that we have here at the bottom where we're modifying the state, we need to move this into actions, uh, or rather we need to dispatch actions that we can then use to modify the state in our reducer. And it's a couple of steps. We'll start by creating a new file here called actions. And in here, we'll create first define the name of the actions that we want to be able to do. Essentially, I like to use constant for the names of the actions just so I can import those and be sure that I don't typo them anywhere. The action itself is just an object. So if we take a look at a sample, what it could look like, it will look something like this. So it's an object that has a type property that could be something like add to do. And then it can have any kind of payload. So other properties, if we, for instance, call add to do, we might want to uh, send along the task name. So the task could be then a string like foo. So that's the action that we need to dispatch to the store. And that's something that the reducer will receive here and is able to then switch over the type on. Now we could create these actions directly in our to-do view and pass those to the store, but generally thought of as a much better practice to have a action creator function, which everyone that wants to dispatch the action calls. That way you can always ensure that the action looks the same no matter who triggers that action. Also, you're able to uh, transform the data that gets passed into the action creator and then transform that before you send it over to the reducer. And that's something that we will do in the first action creator here. The first one I want to create is for this add to do. So we'll export a function called add to do. This will take in the task string and it will return an object where the type is this add to do. But then instead of just passing the task, what I want to do is create a to do property and here actually initialize the to do object. I want to introduce a ID field on our to do. So we'll add ID and call nano ID, which is that library that we included earlier or installed earlier. So we'll import that. like so. So in addition to the ID, we want to add the task and then the complete property, which defaults to false. Like so. so this way, whoever calls add to do only needs to supply the task and we have a central place in our application where we actually instantiate new to do's. Okay, that's the first one. The second one is for updating to-do status. So if it gets marked as completed or, uh, or marked as active, again, we'll export a new function called update to-do stat status. This one will take in a to-do and the complete property. So whether it was completed or not, and return an object again, return the action object that has a type of update to do status. And here we'll pass in the to do and the complete information. So here we don't need to do too much. We just create, create an action object, pass in the data that we got in. Update filter will look very similar. So export a function called update filter. This takes in the filter string and returns an object with the type update filter. And the payload here, here will be the filter. Final one that we have is for clearing completed to do's. Again, export a constant clear completed 
which doesn't take in anything as a parameter and it returns an object of type clear completed. Okay, so now we have these uh, functions that we can call to always get a action object that's created in the same way. So no matter who calls this add to do, we always get the same action object, which will very uh, much help us to keep the application running the way we intend it to. All right, so now that we have the action creators defined, we can go back into our reducer and use those here in the switch to actually do uh, to actually modify the state. So we'll start by importing the action names. So I just import all those constants that I exported in, in the actions file. And then we can go into the switch statement here and start going through those one by one and define how they should work. Essentially what we are doing here is taking all this logic that we have in the to-do view and just moving it over here into the reducer. So case add to-do is our first case. We want to return the next uh, state or the updated state. So we create a new object. We copy over all the properties of the previous state, but we change the to-do array here. And again, like we did before in the to-do view, we don't modify the existing array, but we create a new array uh, that includes that change. In our case, means that we take all the to-dos that we had from before, and then we add this to-do that we got passed in with the action. All right, so that takes care of adding a to-do. The next thing that we have is the updating to-do status. Uh, update to-do status here. We'll again return the next uh, state, which includes all the properties of our state from before. And then we modify or update the to-dos array. In this case, we'll do the same as we did here in to-do view. So we'll essentially map on the to-dos. So we map on the to-dos and then we check if the action the to-do equals to that. If so, we take the complete property from the action and update that. And if not, then we just pass back the uh, to-do that we are mapping on so we don't modify it. So this way, uh, we only update this one specific to-do, but we generate a new array with that change in it. Okay, so now we have two of our four actions created. Next one is to update the filter. Update filter. Here again, we return the updated state. So a new state object containing everything that we had from before. But the filter will be action.filter, so whatever the new filter value is. And finally, we clear the completed ones. Clear completed. Here we return, again, state object containing everything from before with the change that we filter out all the, uh, all the completed ones. Okay, so we run filter and just filter out all the ones that are completed. All right, almost there. So now that we have moved all the logic into the reducer, we have these action creators that are able to create the appropriate type of actions. What remains to be done is going into to do view and pulling out all the logic that we have hard coded in here so that it's fully driven 
buy this Redux store. So we'll go through these one by one. So we still want to check if we have a task, but instead of modifying our local state in this object, we will call store.dispatch. And then we'll use this action creator that we had from uh, in the actions.js file to create this add to do. So we can use our ID here to import this. And this takes in the task. So we just pass in this dot task. And then we clear the task property locally, which will then clear the uh, text field. All right. Update task is something that's just local to, to this uh, component itself. So that's not something that we need to send anywhere. But update to do status is one of those actions that we moved into our Redux store. So here again, we will call the store and we'll dispatch an action and we'll use this update to do status method from our action creator and pass in the updated to do and the complete information. Same for filter changed. So we call dispatch. We call, I think I call this update filter for some reason. Let's see. Yeah, update filter. And then we pass in the e dot detail dot value like before. Clear completed, same story. So store dot dispatch, pass in clear completed, and that doesn't take in any parameters at all. OK, so that was a lot of typing. And essentially, again, reviewing what we did, we took all the state management that we had in this to-do view, and we moved it into this reducer, which maintains the state. Our to-do view is able to subscribe to those changes through the store, and it's able to update the uh, status or update the state by dispatching actions to this store. For dispatching actions, we created these action creators uh, that allow us to always remember to create the same type of action every time. OK, so let's go back into our application and see that this hopefully still works the same way. Let's open up the console here, see if we have any, any errors. So far, it looks good. Let's refresh, make sure we have everything up. One, two, three. Let's update something. I really recommend that you install the Redux DevTools if you are using Chrome. This will allow you to actually uh, look at what's happening in the Redux store as, as we're going along. So you can see that we added a to-do, added another to-do. At any point, you can look at the whole uh, uh, raw state here. And you can kind of see how, how this updates. What's pretty funny too is you can jump back in time or forward in time and kind of see how how your application state has evolved over time. This is something that can be very helpful in understanding how your application actually behaves, especially when you start having many components triggering these actions. So this is something that's very, very helpful. All right, so we essentially now have the application back into the same state that we had it from before just that it's using Redux. There's one more thing that I would like to optimize here, and that is the filtering of these to-dos. So currently, we're filtering those inside of our to-do view on any change to the properties. So if you remember, we installed this reselect library. That's something that we can use to create a memoized selector, uh, which is very helpful if we have this derived type of data. So we don't typically want to duplicate any information in the state itself. So if we have something that can be calculated from existing data in the state, uh, it tends to be a good idea to create a reselect selector for it. So we'll go into our reducer. 
and we'll define first two helper selectors just to that are specific to getting the parts of uh, the state that we're interested in. The first one will be for getting the to-dos and this is a function that takes in the state and returns state.todos. The second one will be exactly the same except for the filter like that. So essentially these are just uh, their only job is to return a specific part of the state. Then we use a uh, create selector function from reselect to create this actual uh, selector. First I'll export this function. We'll call it get visible to do selector. And this will use create selector that will in this case got auto imported from reselect. If your ID didn't do that, make sure to import create selector from reselect. Create selector takes in first a number of the selectors that are the input values for a selector. In our case, it's this get to do selector and the get filter selector. The final argument here is a function that takes in those uh, those two values, so it will take in the to-dos and it will take in the filter and then return whatever the output value of this selector should be. The nice thing with reselect is that it listens for changes to these, so it will only recalculate this value if any of those two things have changed. So if you have a very large state tree and somebody changes like their date of birth or name or something like that, that doesn't have any effect on the to-dos, this uh, data wouldn't have to be recalculated. So in here, essentially what we need to do is move over this logic that we had internally in to-do view. And of course, instead of calling this dot filter, we'll use the past in filter value. Again, for active, we filter out all the non-complete ones. For completed, we filter only the completed ones and for anything else we just return all, all the to-dos. Now that we've moved out all the logic from here, we'll remove the apply filter method from here. We will remove the call to apply filter from our template so that we just again map over the to-dos. Currently the to-dos property is every single to-do in our in our state, which is not what we want to do. Instead, here we'll call this uh, selector that we had. So we'll call the uh, get visible to do selector. Make sure that it did get auto imported from our reducer. And then we pass in the state. So when we pass in the state here, this will uh, call both get to do selector and get filter selector with that state that we passed in, and then we'll produce only the visible to-dos. When we set the visible to-dos to our lit element view, that will cause the view to get updated. All right, let's go back into our browser one more time. Try this out. One, two, three. Select two of these. Filter by active, completed, all clear completed. Excellent. All right, so arguably, we have made our application quite a bit more complex. Before we had everything that we needed inside of this one to-do view component, and now we've spread it out among a whole bunch of different uh, JavaScript files into a separate state and a reducer and actions. For a very simple application like this, it may not feel like it's really worth it, and it honestly probably isn't. Where Redux really starts to show its benefits is when you start to have a much larger application that's priced of many different small components that all are interested in different parts of the state and all are updating uh, the state. Having a central source, single source of truth is something that will really help uh, you understand the data flow of your application and can really help kind of avoid a lot of unnecessary problems in the, uh, in the pr uh, application. All right, so that's it for video three. In the next video, we will take a look at adding another view so that we can really start seeing some of the benefits of using Redux so we can reuse the same state for that. 
we'll take a look at how we can navigate between these views and we'll take a look at how we can split our code uh, payload essentially into bundles so that when a user logs into the application they only need to download the code that's needed for for that specific use case essentially making sure that the application stays performant for every user so be sure to check that out thanks